What's going on, YouTube? Nick Corona here, bringing you another cryptocurrency and mining video. I have something real exciting I want to talk to you guys about today. And it's how you can actually add another graphics card to your motherboard. If you have an M.2 slot or you don't even know what it is, stay tuned because we're going to get up real close to it and personal and show you how you can get the most money out of your motherboard. If adding another graphics card to your current motherboard sounds good to you, stay tuned. And I'll go ahead and add a link below where you can buy your own M.2 converter. <laughs> Without further ado, let's do the M.2. <laughs> All right. And today we are going to be working on this Gigabyte mini board. It is a B250M. And I will apologize for any of the peripheral sounds. You might hear the 3D printer running in the background. Um, so the whole purpose of this build is I'm actually going to be going for one of my first um, slash file coin mining rigs. And I'm looking into burst coin. So we went with a slightly better processor since that's pretty much what it uses. An i3. I actually got it open box though. So... That was about a uh, hundred bucks. I got that for a hundred bucks. That's already installed for this video today. Um, also, I bought the cheapest RAM possible, which um, four gigs of DDR4 RAM. This was fifty dollars. I have our M.2 PCIe converter right here, which is what this video's main purpose is today. And then I went ahead and bought a four terabyte hard drive. Um, the reason I did this is obviously because I want to do file coin mining, but what kind of intrigued me is I noticed when you want to buy a small hard drive, like say a 60 or 80 gig for windows, it's like 40 or 50 bucks. And this is only 110. So, I mean, you're paying $60 for 60 gigabytes or $110 for 4,000 gigabytes. And then I managed to get a used 700 watt power supply for about 40 bucks. So um, altogether, this build is about $385. And then I just have an old um, Zotac GTX 970 that I'm gonna put in it. And uh, those are going for about 200 bucks, making the whole build about $585. And once again, that's file coin mining. And um, I'm hoping that I can have it mine crypto at the same time and just add more cards. So without further ado, the M.2 is going to be this one right here. Right here. Let me get nice and close on that. All right, here's your M.2. You got this little plug here with these two holes here. So that's what you're looking for. Some other boards have one, some have two, and some have none. And here's what this looks like. And it comes with a little Molex power cord. It looks like there's even a little tool in there. And there you have it. Looks like I might need a screw. Alright, and there you have it. That's what the adapter looks like. Comes with a little screwdriver. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this screw out. And this is the one that just, uh, you know, was in the motherboard. Ah, clicked in real easily. I'm just going to put the same screw back in. Alright. And 
there you have it that's pretty much the whole hard installation and it's nice because there's a little LED light on it so one advantage if your cards having issues in this slot the light will indicate it and then it comes with this little power adapter it needs kinda like a power riser almost and uh, you just slide this in there and then you plug the other end into a Molex and there you have it one two three four PCI Express slots. PCI Express E slots. So, whenever you're installing RAM, um, if you don't see numbers on the RAM slots, you typically want to always do the one furthest away from the processor. And then if you have two sticks, you want to make sure to do the same color. So you'd put one here and one here. Um, starting with the one furthest away and when you put it in the way I like to do it is I get it really close and then I put my index finger on the tab and my thumbs on top of the RAM and then basically make a pinching motion and it'll pinch those right in um, the other thing I have for this motherboard is feet so one two three four, five, six, six feet. And these are 3D printed. Just kind of lay them, lay them out. And they just go right through the little screw hole there. It's nice to get the board up and, uh, you know, not have to have it on a cardboard box they look cool and they uh, add some nice airflow you know air can completely flow underneath the board now so I'm just gonna put it N6 is probably overkill but you know these are super quick and easy prints I mean these things print out super fast all these were one big print I think it probably took like an hour probably print like 15 of them probably use, I use them all the time they're great I'm gonna make some with hooks so they stay the only hard parts getting them in and if you notice they have little tabs on them so if you want to screw them down you totally could and there you have it so I got it on the feet now which is really nice can confidently press on the board now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our power supply up here. And like I said, this is a 700 watt, literally got it for $40, just some random, random used modular power supply. And I have some more rails for it if we need them, but nice. This one's off of a uh, ant miner, <laughs> clearly. Sometimes these, uh, this one on the end is just a little bit of a B, but you just gotta, just gotta jam it in there with the rest of them, you know? Hey, get back in there. Alright, so there's that one. Don't forget your motherboard power. Get that guy in there. We'll go ahead and put in a Zotac 970. Got our little riser, the uh, PCI Express part of it. I'm gonna do it in this slot just cause, you know, wanna make sure it works. Alright, and then I'm going to need to grab a Molex rail. Alright, so if you have a modular power supply, just get one of your rails with the Molex on it. Plug this bad boy in here. Sometimes these are fun. Make sure you don't accidentally uh, push the pins through. 
they go through the other end really easily. Just kind of wiggle them around till you feel them. There you go. And then when you see those kind of bow out a little bit, that's how you know you have it in all the way. All right. Um, this old 9 series card actually needs two six prong connectors. Craziness. I have adapters, but since I'm only putting one card on this board right now, we'll just go ahead and use the um, the six prong rail, which has two of them on it. All right, and then uh, we just need one more for the powered riser. We'll go ahead and plug that in right here. You literally can't do them the wrong way. And last but not least, my four terabyte hard drive, which I will just plug into the same ribbon as the graphics card riser. And then last but not least, we just need our SATA cable. Now when you're plugging in the SATA cable, look, there's tons of SATA ports on here. Let me scoot this up a little bit but there's actually two here down in this lower right corner and another four here so there's six you want to look for whichever one's labeled zero or one so right here there's four little there's a square where it says three one two zero and it indicates this one's zero plug that into the hard drive And if you're anything like me and you always forget to buy a switch, you will need something metal. All right, so now that we have everything hooked up, let's give it a go. All right, and there you have it. Got our little LED light. And there you have it. There is our M.2 slot now functioning as a PCI Express slot. So I hope that you're able to learn something out of this and hopefully have a quick, easy installation on your M.2 slot and squeeze one more graphics card onto your board. So thank you till next time. Happy mining. <laughs>